Hello everyone. In this video, I will provide you the basics of MATLAB programming. However, I will use a free open source software, Octave GNU, to execute the MATLAB code. For installation of Octave or using Octave Online, please check the link in the description below or the info icon at the top right corner of the screen. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. First, let's get a quick tour of the layout of Octave. This is command window, unlike the one that we can find in MATLAB. And here, we can directly run the MATLAB code. Next, we have file browser section to navigate through the folders to open or check different files. This is workspace, and unlike the one in MATLAB, it stores all the variables being used during the runtime of the code. Anything stored here will be accessible to us. Right now, it is clear, and once we start declaring variables, it will start showing here. Next is command history, and unlike in MATLAB, it saves the commands that has been executed earlier. Here, you may see different commands that have executed in the past. Let's check another tab. Editor tab is basically used to write the MATLAB script or MATLAB function. We will be using this section all the time in future. Next is the documentation tab. We can get help regarding the usage of different commands from this section. And finally, the variable editor. From here, we can directly edit the values of variables. If you are already familiar with MATLAB, then you might have noticed that most of the sections that we find in MATLAB layout is present here. Now, let's start MATLAB programming. Here, CLC stands for Clear Command Window. Let's start with using Command Window as a calculator. We can do various mathematical operations directly in Command Window, but this can do more than a scientific calculator and can do various complex calculations. Let's define a complex number, a small TPR. You can use up arrow and down arrow to get the previous commands that are in the command history. It can directly operate on the complex number too, you might have noticed that I've used i to represent imaginary term. MATLAB has various predefined special values like pi, clock, date, etc. Also, you can use format to control the range of values that will be displayed. With format long, more numbers are displayed after decimal point. Let's get back to sort for now. There are various format expressions that you may try. Please check the documentation for more. Let's write a few lines of code to get the concept of MATLAB script. This is an assignment statement and here we are assigning the value 5 to the variable r. Please note, always give your variables descriptive and easy to remember names, alike in this example. Here we could see that we can easily execute commands in command window. However, executing this way could be tedious, especially when we are executing a long list of MATLAB statements. And also, it becomes difficult to keep track of the sequence of the commands. Hence, I will start with another approach, that is writing all the statements in a single file and execute them. First, I will change the current directory where all the files will be placed. We can start a new script by simply clicking here. Rewrite the statements that we have executed earlier. Save the file next. Please note a few things while keeping the file name. First, never use number as a file name. If you use number as a file name, then it will simply display the number rather than executing your file. Next, never use built-in function names of MATLAB like input, plot, apps, etc. With source name, there won't be any problem executing your script. However, in later phase, when you want to execute the MATLAB function, it will execute your file instead of the built-in method function. Let's say we have kept our file name as input. For now, it will be executed. But when you want to run the built-in function named input, it will execute your file instead. Next, don't use spaces or mathematical operator. However, you can use underscore. In case if you use mathematical operator, let's say you use calc plus area as a file name, then the MATLAB will assume that there are two variables named calc and area and those are to be added 
and thus your file will not be executed. And lastly, use the file name that is relevant to the code that you are working on. I will keep the file name as calc underscore area since I will be calculating the area with this code. The file format that we will be using is .m which is basically MATLAB file format. To run the program, press this button or the shortcut key for it is F5 button. Now let's check the result in command window. We could see that the output is displayed unlike the previous one. But with this approach, it becomes a lot easier for changes. Let's make code a bit more self-explanatory by keeping comments in each statement. For comment, we use has or you can also use percentage sign alike in MATLAB. Simple note and comments. As I mentioned earlier, you may use has or percentage for comments. Both are fine. The shortcut for comment is Ctrl plus R key. You may highlight the lines and press Ctrl plus R for comment. And for uncommenting, you have to press Shift plus Ctrl plus R. However, please note that you need to change the comment back to percentage if you want to execute the same code in MATLAB. So, for compatibility, I would suggest to use percentage for comment, especially if you have to run this file again in MATLAB. For now, since I will be running this code only in Octave, I will stick to has for comments. Next, for block comment, we can use combination of curly bracket and has or percentage. And the block of codes within these will not be executed. Next, you might have noticed that all the variables that you have defined have been placed at workplace. Each variable has some data type defined as class here and is, and is of type double. Double is basically the default data type for any variable. There are various different data types that you can use like int, string, etc. I will discuss on those in my later videos. The workspace saves the value, data type, and dimension. Next, let's talk a bit on uses of semicolon. Use of semicolon is not mandatory. It simply stops the echoing of the results in the command window. Like in here, removal of semicolon results the display of the outcome of each statement. If the statement has lesser number of values to be displayed, it won't affect. However, if the code is long and has millions of numbers to display, then it will slow down the execution of the MATLAB script since it needs to display all those values within the command window before getting to the last line of the code. Hence, it is better to use semicolon and in case if any values are to be displayed, then use disp or print functions. Let's start our new MATLAB script to calculate the distance and file velocity. I will name this file as calc underscore distance underscore findable city. The input function will display the string written here in the command window and will wait for the input. Whatever input is being given will then be assigned to the variable u. Here in this function, I am inputting the string. So I need to convert the result findable city which is of data type double also into string so that it can be concatenated with previous string. I can execute this file by calling the name of the file too from command window. The script will now ask for the inputs. Here, whatever number you inputted will be the value of u. You can also check within the workspace that the values that I have inputted have been assigned to u, t, and a. I will modify the placements a bit within the code so that it will look more intuitive. Please note that as with other popular languages, this also generates error for any syntactic errors and that it shows where the error has occurred. Let's comment line 6. In that case, execution of code should generate the error in line 9, stating it could not find the value of v to display. Let's check this out. Here we see that an error is shown and that it is specifying the type of error along with the position where the error has been traced. Also, please note 
that MATLAB is an interpretive language. Hence, it will interpret each statement and execute it. Unlike with compiler-based language, it won't compile and then execute, which is the beauty of this interpretive language, thus making the prototyping jobs faster. However, execution of the overall script will be slower compared to compiler-based language. Thus, for any sort of final software development, I would suggest to go for other programming language. Coming back to MATLAB being interpretive language, you might have noticed that all the lines of code above line 9, which are error-free, has been executed too well. For compiler-based language, this code wouldn't have been executed at all. Finally, few more details on variable editor and help command. You might have also noticed that the file browser is listing the files that we have created earlier. Next, to edit the variable in variable editor, let's define a variable first. If you reassign the value to the same variable, the last value that you have assigned will stay with the variable. To edit the value of variable, let's go to variable editor and then change the value here. Press enter and you will see that the value has been changed in the workspace. Now, if you type A in command window and press enter, it will display 8. To get health related to any built in functions, you can type health and the function name. Let's try with AVS function. You can see that it provides good details on the function along with an example. Let's try this example. That is all for this video. From next video onward, I will dive deeper into the MATLAB programming. Thank you.